Hello, and welcome back to Looking Up at the Big Sky. I'm Katie Aiello with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service at Charles M. Russell National Wildlife Refuge. And with me are Virginia Rux with the Glasgow Office of the National Weather Service and Sue Dalby with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at the Fort Peck Interpretive Center. If you haven't yet, tell us where you are joining from in the comments. If you have any questions throughout tonight's presentation, please type them in the comments section. We will be able to respond to all of your questions during and after the presentation. Virginia, why are we looking up at the big sky tonight? June is the month that we transition into summer, marked by the summer solstice. We're also going to have our last supermoon of the year. How many of you watched the last video about the supermoon and remember what a supermoon is? If you missed our last presentation, check it out on the Looking Up at the Big Sky video playlist on the Fort Peck Project Facebook page. It might be the last supermoon of the year, but it won't be the last full moon we will have. So we will cover the moon phases in this part of our summer astronomy series. I mentioned in the last session that scientists typically use Latin or Greek words. Here's a little bit of Latin lesson today. Solstice comes from the Latin word solstitium, where the root words sol and sister. Sol meaning sun and sister meaning to stand still. It's a description of how Earth seems to briefly pause or stand still at the solstice before changing again. Solstice will officially occur on June 20th, 2021 at 9.32 p.m. MDT. Conversely, the equinox around spring and fall means equal light. Here's a photo of the Terminator. Not the Terminator you might be thinking of. The Terminator is the line on the globe which light becomes dark. This image was taken at the solstice, so this Terminator is aligning well with Earth's tilt at this time of year. In a way, these background images make it look as though the Earth's tilt changes. What's really happening is Earth's tilt doesn't really change much. It stays roughly 23.5 degrees the entire trip around the sun. So what causes us to have a summer solstice or a winter solstice? Ooh, yes, great question. The orbital journey will cause the tilt to be pointed toward or away from the sun at different parts of its orbit. Another common misconception, as our cartoon person says, many people believe that Earth is closest to the sun in summer, making us warmer and farthest away, therefore cooler in winter. The seasons are dictated by the amount of solar radiation received due to the position in orbit that allows its tilt to be pointed toward or away from the sun. In summer, the northern hemisphere isn't necessarily closer. In fact, it's farther away. But the tilt is pointing toward the sun and always and allows more direct solar radiation to hit that portion of Earth. Notice the continents are not changing, therefore the tilt is not changing, only the way the sun's light is hitting the surface. You may have noticed that the sun is up longer in summer. This image is not to scale, but this will give you an idea of what I mean by sun's altitude. The higher altitude also means that the sun is above the horizon for longer periods and the sunrise and sunset locations are different for each season. Have you ever wondered how much higher the sun angle or altitude is in the summer versus the winter where you live? If you know your latitude, you can do a few simple calculations. We would love to hear what your sun's altitude is in the sky at solstice. Just leave those numbers in the comments below. For Glasgow, the latitude is 48.2 degrees. For summertime, you would subtract the positive tilt of 23.5 degrees from the latitude. Then the answer you get is subtracted from 90 and you get the sun's altitude. For the other seasons, you just use the tilt of zero for equinoxes or the negative tilt of negative 23.5 
to get the winter time. If you know one altitude, the difference between each season is 23.5 degrees each. Katie has a hands-on activity to learn more about the movement of the sun. The Earth is constantly rotating on its axis. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to complete one rotation. As the Earth rotates, the shadows cast by the sun change positions. The changes in shadow position can be used to tell, to tell time with a sundial. Sundials vary greatly in complexity and placement. Today, we are going to make a relatively simple sundial that you can construct with an old cereal box and a straw or pencil. You will also need a protractor, tape, and a compass or another device that will tell you the direction of true north. Begin by cutting out an 8 inch diameter circle. Draw a line bisecting the circle and mark one end for 6 a.m. and one end for 6 p.m. Use the protractor to draw a line every 15 degrees. The shadows cast by the sun will move approximately 15 degrees every hour. I have added additional hours before and after 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. because we get more than 12 hours of daylight in Montana this time of year. Now I need to find my latitude and declination. Declination is the number of degrees that true north is from magnetic north in a given location. My latitude is 48 degrees north and my declination is 9 degrees east. Use the latitude to set the angle of your gnomon. The gnomon is the object that will cast a shadow across your dial. In this case, I have used a drinking straw. Push the gnomon through the center of the dial so it is at a 90 degree angle with the dial. I have folded another piece of cereal box to make a simple stand for my dial. Using a protractor to measure the angle, move the gnomon and stand until the angle between the two is equal to your latitude. Tape it in place. Now it is time to position the dial. 12 needs to point to true north. So rather than setting my compass to zero, I will set it to nine degrees east and align the red needle. I will set my dial so 12 is pointing in the same direction as this bearing. Let's check the time. The sundial reads 12, but my watch says one. What happened? The sundial measures solar time, but my watch is set to Montana daylight time. If I want my sundial to read Montana daylight time, I will have to rotate the dial so one is aligned with true north. Let us know if you try this project at home. Your calendar hanging on the wall may have moon phases and the phases you might be familiar with are the new moon, first quarter, last quarter or third quarter, and full moon. This is what the moon will look like on the day of solstice. What phase would you call this? A waxing gibbous. The full moon, which is also a supermoon, will occur a few days after the solstice on June 24th. Why don't we have an eclipse every time there's a full moon or a new moon? The simple answer is that our orbits around the sun in the solar system and the moons that orbit their host planets don't orbit on the same plane. Moon's orbital plane is on a five degree angle relative to Earth. This image is not to scale, but it should give you an idea. This might look familiar if you watched our last video. This month's full moon will also be the last supermoon of the year. If you can recall, a supermoon is when the moon appears bigger and brighter than usual to a person looking at the moon from Earth because the moon is usually in perigee, which is the point in the moon's orbit closest to Earth. This one is coming up on June 24th. If you can think of some things that the sun and moon affect on Earth, go ahead and list those in the comments. I can think of one thing that the moon affects, the tides. Earth's gravity keeps the moon in its orbit, but the moon also exerts its gravity on the Earth, causing a tidal force. 
The tidal force of the moon causes the earth and its water to bulge slightly on the sides that are closest and farthest from the moon. The waters of the oceans are pulled outward at these bulges, causing high tides. The earth rotates through each bulge once per day, resulting in two high tides every day and two low tides every day. Extreme tides are called spring tides, but don't be confused by the name. These tides actually occur about every two weeks during the new and full moons. During these moon phases, the alignment of the sun relative to the earth and moon also exerts a tidal force on the earth, causing more extreme tides. The moon and sun also affect wildlife. The full moon may play an important role for some migratory nocturnal birds by providing them better feeding opportunities, which allows them to stay fueled up for their long journeys. Many bird species are also affected by the photo period or the amount of daylight in a given day. A change in photo period triggers molting or the replacement of feathers and subsequent migration. Wildlife species respond to photo period rather than daily weather because the changes in photo period are stable over time. I know the sun also affects me. When the days are long, I want to be outside. Sue, do you have any suggestions of where to explore, particularly on the day of the solstice when we will have the most sunlight? There are many unique recreation options around Fort Peck Reservoir and the Charles M. Russell Wildlife Refuge. The summer solstice builds in plenty of time and sunlight for a long day of exploring. Two sites you might consider are Forchette Bay and Crooked Creek Recreation Areas, but be prepared for 50 to 60 miles of gravel roads to access either of these sites. Be sure your vehicle has good tires, a spare tire, a full gas tank, maybe bring some extra water and food. Both Forchette Bay and Crooked Creek have campsites if you can stay a few days to also watch the supermoon on the 24th. On your drive, you can watch for antelope fawns on the prairie, mule deer fawns in the foothills and the breaks, and on a lucky day, see some elk. Thanks for those recommendations, Sue. Virginia, can you tell us what kind of weather we can expect on the days of the solstice and the supermoon? So we're looking at an extended forecast that is about a week out. We're entering another dry and warm period, and although it is not, it may not be good for drought or fire concerns, this is a good time of year to get out and explore and looking up at the big sky. This time of year, we can get isolated thunderstorms though. So for your safety, check the forecast. For the exact details and timing at your specific location, and for the location that you will be going to, check www.weather.gov slash GGW for the latest detailed forecast. If you get out to explore on the summer solstice or see the supermoon, we would love to see or hear about it. Please share any photos or viewing experiences with us using the hashtag looking up at the big sky. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We will be sticking around for a few minutes to answer questions in the comments. Stay tuned to the Fort Peck Project Facebook page for updates on our July program. We can't wait to look up at the big sky with you then.
Thank you.